Number 10 Downing Street, the British Prime Minister's residence just off Whitehall, here in central London at the heart of British government, seems a very long way from the mayhem in the Middle East today. But the problems in that region, that have been there for a century now, started right here at a meeting in Downing Street at the time of the First World War. There was a high-level secret meeting here on the 16th of December 1915. The Prime Minister was here, the War Minister, the Navy Minister, the Armaments Minister. They'd all come to hear one man, Sir Mark Sykes an aristocrat, a Tory MP, a self-proclaimed expert on the Middle East. What he had to say was pretty jaw-dropping. Nothing less than a plan for the dismemberment of the Ottoman Empire and a redivision of the Middle East between Britain and France. Creating a Middle East which in a sense is still with us. And the evidence is here at the front of Downing Street where we have a level of militarization and security that reflects the war on terror, a direct consequence of the Middle East that was created by the British Empire a hundred years ago. Mark Sykes was one of these mavericks created by the British Empire. He was an aristocrat and um, he had a great big stately home in Yorkshire. He was also an MP for a northern constituency for the city of Hull. But when he was in London, he stayed in his wife's grand residence, right here next to Buckingham Palace. Nine Buckingham Gate, the Sykes residence in London, couldn't be grander. As I look across the road, I can see Buckingham Palace itself. This is the man who laid out his plan at that secret uh, top-level meeting at Downing Street, his plan for the remodelling of the Middle East. A man described by T.E. Lawrence, Lawrence of Arabia, another major player in the Middle East during the First World War. A man described by Lawrence as a bundle of prejudices, intuitions and half sciences. A man who would take an aspect of the truth, detach it from its circumstances, inflate it, twist it and model it to sketch out in a few dashes a new world.
That new world he envisaged became the Sykes-Picot Agreement, a negotiation between Mark Sykes for the British and Georges Picot for the French that produced an image of the Middle East divided into the countries that we know today as Lebanon, Syria, Palestine, Jordan and Iraq. A deeply dysfunctional Middle East that is still riven by conflict a hundred years later. The Sykes-Picot Agreement wasn't the only thing that Mark Sykes was negotiating at this time. He was involved in another secret meeting on the 7th of February 1917 in a house not far from here with the man who lived right here. This was the home of Heim Weizmann, the head of the Zionist organisation in Britain. Also at the secret meeting was Herbert Samuel, a leading Jewish politician, and Walter Rothschild, a leading Jewish banker, both of them supporters of the Zionist movement. And the aim was to create a Jewish homeland in Palestine. The only problem was that Palestine was already home to three quarters of a million Arabs. That meant the Zionists needed a powerful ally, like the British Empire. Weizmann was offering the British a deal. He said they could move a million Jews into Palestine over a 50-year period and that would provide a very powerful safeguard of British interests in the Middle East. We've come to the heart of the beast, the heart of the British establishment, the Houses of Parliament, because all of Sykes's and Weizmann's lobbying paid off, and their ambition for the Middle East became the policy of the British Empire.
This is Arthur Balfour, who had become the British Foreign Secretary by November 1917. And Weizmann's lobbying had paid off. The Balfour Declaration, as we now know it, was issued on the 2nd of that month. And it read as follows. His Majesty's Government view with favour the establishment in Palestine of a national home for the Jewish people and will use their best endeavours to facilitate the achievement of this object. It meant that the British had done a deal with the Arabs, promising them an independent state, a deal with their French allies to carve up the Middle East between them, and a deal with the Zionists to hand them Palestine. Mark Sykes's lobbying had created a dysfunctional Middle East which has been with us for a century, a region riven with conflict as a result of the betrayals of the British Empire and the work of men like Arthur Balfour.